Um, this first part is introduction, right? Gwen, stop drawing. Draw later. Do math with me. Um, it says your grandma gives you $1,000 at Christmas. Wouldn't that be nice? Anyone's grandma give them $1,000 at Christmas? Yeah. I'm recording. Um, just turn it into the right one and say submitted to the wrong place. Um, okay. Okay. Grandma gives you $1,000 at Christmas. Each month you spend $60. Write an equation of how much money you have after M months. See if you can do it. I'm going to watch. Try to write that equation. This is just review, right? This is just what we did yesterday. Shane, you're not even on the notes yet. What are we doing? Shane, what are we doing? Shoot. Celebrity sighting. What? Oh, <laughs> uh, who's the guy from Star Wars that's the hairy guy? Chewbacca. They saw Chewbacca. They, my kids saw Chewbacca at, oh my goodness, they are just having the time of their life. Wait, why are they looking at Um. Yeah. Because I didn't get invited. My, no, my sister-in-law just, she's from, she's from Washington here. Okay, what'd you write? <laughs> um, I see. Hi, Olivia. Um, okay, I see some that are correct. I see some that are not. Um, where are you at? Yes. So if you put a thousand dollars into the account and then you spend sixty. What operation is that? Minus. minus. Some of you added. So minus 60 per the number of months. Um, write an equation for how much money you would have. So pick a variable. Um, T for the total amount of money you have or y. y if you like Y. Um, but they gave you M as your months. So use M as your months. Okay. If they give you the variables, use what is given. If they don't, then you can define your own. But it should look like that. Okay, um, four six is all about relations and functions. Henry, do it later, later. No word right now. I did. Thank you. Yes, we're at two minutes and forty eight seconds right now. Um, so a relation. Think back for me. What did we say a relation was versus a function? Is <laughs> a pairing of numbers. Um. A relation is like numbers that have a relationship, right? Versus a function, which is also numbers that have some relationship, but will not have any repeats of your X values. So there's some difference in terms of relations and functions. With a relation, also with a function, you will have a domain and a range, okay? Um, three different ways you can think about the domain and three different ways you can think about the range. The domain you can think of as your input values. Um, do you remember which ones those are? Which ones are we putting into the function? That's your x, okay? So it's often the x value. Um, we call those your independent variable, okay? They are independent. They don't need y. They depend on no one, okay? They're independent. X can be any number that you're gonna plug into some function or some relation. Your range is your output values, which are typically your Y value in a function or a relation. And those are dependent variables because they depend on whatever you plugged in for X, right? Whatever you plugged in for X, that's what you'll, not, that's not what you'll get. You'll get something out for Y. Okay, um, so when you hear me say input versus output or independent versus dependent or X versus Y, this is what we're talking about. The domain is typically your X values. The range is typically your Y values, okay? Um, and I'm gonna show you a few ways that you can determine if a relation is a function. One of those is called with a mapping diagram. And how you do this, with a mapping diagram, 
is you put all of your numbers into boxes. Henry, no. Um, so just make yourself two boxes here. Okay. Is it? I don't think that's embarrassing. Do you think that's embarrassing? I'm not trying to embarrass you. Um, okay. So in this setup, you're going to make the one column, this column here, your X values, your domain, and the other column, your Y values or your range. But here's the thing. We put them in order and we don't repeat any numbers. So if there's a repeat X, we write it one time, okay? If there's a repeat Y, we write it one time. So look right now at your X values. Negative two, zero, four, and five. Now the beautiful thing is those are in order for you. Are there any repeats? Yeah. No, so you're gonna write them all. Negative two, zero, four, and five. I'm going to show you. Oh, sorry. Rectangles. Um, it's okay. Geometry is next year. You'll get there. Um, your Y values. Okay. That's all of these. Okay. Um, are those in order right now? Yeah. No. But we don't write the last one. But we don't write the last one. There's a repeat, right? So you write this as 0.5. 2.5 and 6.5 because we're not going to repeat any number in one column. Khalees. Yeah. <coughs> you might have, yeah. I Mapping diagram. Um, okay, so now here's what you do. You're going to draw lines connecting your points. So I'm going to draw a line from negative 2 to 0 0.5. And then I'm going to draw a line from 0 to 2.5, and then I'm going to draw a line from 4 to 6.5, and then I'm going to draw a line from 5 to 2.5, okay? If you are a visual person, mapping diagrams are lovely because what it does is it shows you really what we're looking at is this left column. If you have two arrows coming off of one of those numbers, it is not a function, if each of those numbers only has one arrow coming off of it, it is a function. So is this a function? Yes. Yes. Right? We have no repeat X value. There is not two arrows coming off of one of those X's. Okay? Is this one of your food? Yeah, that's mine. Oh, that's mine. <laughs> that's my mom. Is that your mom? She looks just like you. Or you look just like her. Um, okay. Um, get my lunch schedule right. Well, make a lunch before you come to school and bring it with you. Okay, so let's try this here. An X column and a Y column. Okay, in, in the X column, what numbers are you going to write? Six, four, five, six, five, Four, five, six. Put them in order with no repeats, right? So there's six, four, six, five. Put them in order, no repeats. This is not. Okay? Um, for your Y values, five, three, four, and eight. So you're going to go what? Three, four, five, and eight. Now when you draw your arrows, 6 to 5, 4 to 3, 6 to 4, and 5 to 8. Is this a function? No. Why not? Because of this. There are two lines coming off of one of your Xs. Notice over here, though, there were two on the Y. The Y does not matter. You may have two of the same Y. You may not have two of the same X, okay? Um, so this one is not a function, okay? You may only have one Y value for each X value that you have, which means no repeat Xs. Okay, um, this one's my favorite way to check if something's a function because it's very quick. It is called the vertical line test or the VLT if you want, okay? Um, if we are doing the VLT, um, Basically, what we're saying is a graph is a function 
if no vertical line intersects the graph at more than one point. So you cannot draw a vertical line and hit two points at the same time. Knock on the window, she'll hear you. <laughs> Did she look? She hears you, but she can't see you. It's. Wait, I literally texted her. Okay. Um, so here's what you're doing. Come back. What? Can I what? Can I what? On the the mapping diagram. Okay. Okay, let me explain. Let me explain. Are you ready? Okay. If you look at this setup, right? Coming off of your X values, there was only one line. Do you see my red marks there? Okay. That's a function. On this one, coming off of my X values, that six has two lines coming off of it. If that six goes to two different Y values, then it is not a function. So you can have duplicates on the Y side. Like I can go to two of the same Y value and that's fine. You cannot do it on the X's. So if your X's have two lines coming off of the same X value, like the six here, it is not a function. But this side, you only had one y value for each of your x values. That is a function. Oh, because it would turn into like, um, like a curved line or a straight line. Like curved. Not curved or straight. I mean, this might help you to visualize what makes something a function or not. Let's look at the vertical line test, and then maybe that helps it click a little more. Okay. Here's how the vertical line test works, okay? If I can draw a vertical line anywhere on my function, like I can draw them anywhere I want, as long as it's a vertical line, you can only hit that line one time, your function, one time. So once, 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 right? If I draw a vertical line, I only hit in one spot. That is a function. Is vertical just straight? Vertical is like this. Horizontal is like this. Like the vertical is this. Yes, the horizon. If you look out on the horizon, right, that's a horizontal line. Um, okay. So look at the second one. Yes. If I draw vertical lines here, do you ever hit two points at the same time? No. No. Um, so that is a function. Now look at the next one. You hit twice like on the No. If I draw vertical lines, I hit here and here. I hit here and here. That is not a function. Okay, you cannot hit two at the same time. Now think about what that means. Go back to the mapping diagram idea. I have this point right here is the point negative one, three. This point is the point negative one, negative three. I had repeat X values, right? That is not a function. So that might help you visualize it a little bit. Um, what about this one, the circle? Is a circle a function? No, I hit here and here. And as soon as you hit two points, you're done. You don't have to keep checking. As soon as you do it, it is not a function. So as soon as you hit two points, that is not a function. Okay? Okay. Um, Kylie, stop messaging. Great. She doesn't need you to text her right now. Um, so what? Oh, my God. Wait, no. You're trying to write this in words? No, like, because, like, I'm trying to, like, explain it in a simple way in words, and I can't do it. Right, but are you saying the vertical line test or the mapping diagram? The mapping diagram. Okay, so I would say for the mapping diagram, if you're going to write it in words, say, um, you cannot have repeat x values so you can only have oops, one line coming from each 
number on the x side. Okay, the y doesn't matter, but on the x side, you can only have one line coming off of each x. Does that make sense? Yeah. Khalees. So Hit me. Have you ever learned in cursive before? Have you ever, ever written in cursive? Oh, I, I live my life in cursive. Yeah, because you write. Like, like, I connect my letters too. I love cursive. I would write this whole thing. Like, <laughs> my cursive is so much better than my handwriting. I can't read that. I can read that. You, well, you cannot have... I like cursive so much better. Mine, this is so messy to me. This is like pretty. That's like insane. You should, you should lower That's your like, thickness on your pen. Well, when I do that, yeah. But I don't like it when it's like so paper thin. I know. I do. Because then you can see all the little. Because then it like it just doesn't feel bold enough for you guys to see it. If I'm writing small. Anyway, um, what was your second question? Yeah. Was it math related? Yeah. How much for an example too? Do we really need to do the vertical line test on everything? Um yes. I understand that you know it without, but I still want you to be able to graph too, right? So part of it is just making sure that you know how to graph something. Um okay, look at number two. It says, is the relation a function? I want you to use the vertical line test, therefore you need to graph these points. So negative 4, 2. Tell me where you move for the point negative 4, 2. To the left, 4. 4 left, 2 up. Two up. Okay, so there's negative 4, 2. Um, negative 3, 1. 0, negative 2. Negative 4, negative 1. And 1, 2. Okay, the question is, is that a function? Use the vertical line test. Where does it fail? As far to the left as you can go, right? If I draw a line right there, I hit in two places. So is it a function? No, no that is not a function because it doesn't pass the vertical line this test. Like, this one looks hard to graph, but I don't know. These points are hard to graph? Yeah. Um, just make sure when you're plotting points, you have an X and a Y, right? That's good. The X value goes left and right. The Y value goes up and down. Yeah, but I just wish that like Y was, or X was first. I mean, Y was first. Oh, really? You want it? Because you're used to, you know why? I know why. Because you're kind of thinking like slope, which is rise over run, right? Yeah. So I think that's why people get confused. Rise over run is a slope, right? So like, <laughs> this is a slope. Right? We'll get there. We're going to talk about that later. Okay. Stick with me. Um, is this one a function? No. Yeah. There's nowhere that you can draw a line and you hit two points, right? So this is a function. Vertical line test. Okay. Um, I'm going to let you do this one on your own. Plot those points. Tell me if it's a function. And yes, you can tell me just by looking at it, right? Yeah. But I still want to see the points. I still want to see the points. Wait, do I have to like, draw the line? Uh, you don't have to draw a line. You're just plotting those points. Don't draw a line. You can draw the vertical line to check it if you want. Um, Wait, Joaquin, did you graph these? Yeah. Um, okay, so four, two... One, two, zero, one, negative two, two, and three, three. Is that a function? Yes. There is no horizontal line test, right? If it was a horizontal line test, it wouldn't be a function, but that is not a thing. You can draw a vertical line and only hit one at a time. So this is a function. Okay. Okay. Here's where. Isn't that a TV channel? FX is a TV channel, not F of X, but FX is a TV channel. Okay, here's where I need your undivided attention because this is where I tend to lose people. Um, 
Function notation. Do you need a little break? Do we need to take a break? That was a good brain break. You guys got it so well. Um, okay, here's where I need sh your undivided attention because function notation always confuses people and we don't want to be confused, okay? Um, so put your chess games away. Stop drawing your pictures. Pay attention. Naomi, what are you doing right now? There we go. Um, yeah. Okay, here we go. Function notation, okay? I'm telling you, this is confusing for a lot of people. So don't wander off into La La Land right now. Stay with me, okay? <laughs> when you have an equation... That looks like this, okay? Y equals 3X plus 2. You can also write that equation as F of X equals 3X plus 2. Thank you, um, Now, here's where I think the confusion falls. This, normally when we put something and then parentheses and something, it implies what? Multiplication. Multiplication. This is not multiplication, okay? This is saying F, not times X, okay? It's saying F of X. It's saying the function of some value for X equals 3X plus 2. So what it's saying is if I plug in a 3, okay, the function of 3 is 3 times 3, plus two. It's telling you what number you're plugging in for your X value. What's the point of that? Okay. I'll show you once we have it worked out. Um, so here's the deal. It says evaluate this function when X is negative two. So we're saying the function of negative two. The beauty of this is I know even when I get a value here, what I plugged in for X there. So essentially you're getting a point, right? You're getting an X value and a Y value out of the deal. Okay. So let's plug it in. You have two times what? Negative, negative two. Two times that negative two minus three. So F of negative two. In other words, when I plug in negative two, I get what? Negative seven. Simplify that. Two times negative two is a negative four. Negative four minus three is negative seven. So here's what this is saying. When I plug in negative two for X, I get negative seven as my Y, right? This is essentially saying Y equals. Whenever you see F of X, it's essentially Y, okay? So F of negative two, when I plug negative two in for X, I get negative seven for Y. Khalees. When will we need this? Um, all the time in math class. All the time. Do you know, okay, my friend came this morning because he's an electrician. Do you know Devin Mulder? Anybody? He, he's around here all the time. You know Bill? Yes. If you're a cadet, you probably know Bill Mulder. Um, but anyway, he came in this morning and he fully walked into my first period and was like, just so you know, you'll never use this idea in your life again. I don't. I'm an electrician. I use none of it. But do you know what he said next? Hey, shh. don't die. Here's what he said next. I need you to be problem solvers and know how to work through a problem like this if you're going to be my employee someday. Uh, sure, we do it all over the place in life. Yes. To learn, to become problem solvers. Yes. Uh, they said when X equals negative two. Okay, so here's the deal. Um, example four here says the domain, shh, domain is what? Which values are your domain? The X values. The domain of f of x equals negative 1.5x plus 4. Okay, so that's our function. The domain of that function is 1, 2, 3, 4. Wait, what's a domain? The x values, right? So here's what they're saying. 
X is one, two, three, and four. What is the range? In other words, what is your Y or what is your F of X, right? F of X and Y are really the same thing. What are we doing? Focus for me. Um, so what you're doing here is you're plugging in negative 1.5 times 1 plus 4. What do you get? Plug it into your calculator if you want. What? 2.5. Um, so you would plug in a 2.5 here. Okay. What do you get when you plug in a 2? So negative 1.5 times 2 plus 4. Remember that little trick I showed you where you can just change the number? You don't have to rewrite the whole thing. Um, you get 1. Plug in a 3. Negative 1.5 times 3 plus 4. Negative 0.5. Plug in a 4. Negative 1.5 times 4 plus 4, you get a negative 2. Okay? So here is your domain. This is your range, right? Your y values are your range. Your x values are your domain. Khalees, what's your question? Why, when you, like, multiply decimals by whole numbers, sometimes they get bigger and then sometimes they get smaller? Because it's the negative. Like, like it's the negative, right? This is a negative number that we're multiplying. So the negative is getting bigger, but a negative that gets bigger is a smaller number, right? That's why. Um, okay. Now the question was, what is the range? Don't just tell me this because that's not how we write a range. How do we write a range? In order, least to greatest, no repeats, right? So your range is negative 2, <laughs> negative 0 0.5, shh, hey, it's my turn, 1, and 2.5, okay? When they ask you for a range, this is what they want. Your range is, put it in brackets, put them in order, right? If they give you the domain like this, they want the range the same way. Put them in order, <laughs> no repeats. I guess um, the Sound range the thing and the other thing, the domain. Domain and the Well, so essentially it is, right? It's a block day. So I would have broken this one lesson into two to make it shorter. But because it's a block day, we kind of have to. Um, okay. It's a good thing we're not doing the book it, huh? Um, so look at this one. Same problem. I just didn't give you the chart. I'm saying if your domain is 1357. You can make a chart if you want. You don't have to make a chart. Um, say this, g of 1. So if I plug in a 1, I get 4 times 1 minus 12. What do we get? 8. Close. Nine. Negative 8, right? 4 minus 12. Okay, so that's one of them. Plug in a 3. G of 3. If I plug in a 3 for x, I get 4 times 3 minus 12. What do we get? Zero. Zero. Okay. Plug in a 5. G of 5 is 4 times 5 minus 12. What do you get? 20 minus 12 eight. is 8. Plug in the last one. G of 7, I get 4 times 7 minus 12. Did I lose you? So 28 minus 12 is 16. Okay? So what is the range? It is those numbers in order, no repeats. Well, they're in order and they don't repeat, so you just rewrite them like that. Khalees. Solve for y when x is something. Yes, exactly the same thing. It's just a different notation. Because in function notation, now it's like I can see my point. This is the point 1, negative 8 on a graph. This is the point 3, 0 on a graph. This is the point 5, 8 on a graph, right? So it's helping you to see when I have this as my x value, this is my y value for an entire function, right? 
It's a different way to look at it. Okay, last one. Um, you have three quarts of paint to paint the trim in your house. A quart covers 100 square feet. Here's the function that represents that, where your area is A of Q, and Q is your quarts of paint that will cover what domain and range are reasonable for the function and what is the graph of the function. Now, this is a real world situation, right? So you're gonna be able to come up with your domain and range. It's said at the beginning, you have three quarts of paint to paint the trim of your house. Now, if I want to paint the trim of my house and I'm looking for a domain, what are your options for what you could plug in as your X? What, what is our X right now? Negative two. Zero. No, like nothing. What is our X? What's our X variable? Right. Q is our, our X value, right? So quarts. How many quarts of paint could you use? The maximum you can use is three. What's the least amount of paint you could use? Zero. Maybe you never got to work, right? So your domain is everything between zero and three. Right? I could use zero quarts of paint. I could use 1.275 quarts of paint. But I only have three at my disposal. So the number of quarts, my X value, if you will, has to be some number between zero and three. What is that? Wait, why are you the Q? Q. Okay, I'm going to explain it again. Listen. I'm going to explain it again. Hear me right now. Don't giggle. Don't talk to your neighbor. Just hear the explanation. You have three quarts of paint to paint the trim of your house. Okay, so you have three cans of paint, three individual quarts of paint. If I'm gonna paint the trim of my house, I could use zero quarts and never actually start painting, but I can't use any more than three because I only have three at my disposal, right? So maybe I use one and a half and I'm done. The job is done. That's fine. Maybe I use all three completely and now I'm out of paint. That means the number of quarts that I could use is anywhere between zero, I never started, and three, I used every last drop of paint, right, that I have. So my domain, my X value, which in this case is a Q, number of quarts, is between zero and three. So now you have to think, well, then what is my range? What are the possibilities for the amount of area that I cover? And you have your numbers that you're going to use for that. You have your low end and you have your high end. What you do is you plug those into the function. A of zero, if I use zero quarts of paint, how many square feet did I paint? Zero. 100 times zero is zero, right? So my range can go anywhere from zero square feet, right? A of Q is what we're finding. All the way up to what? Three. Three is what we'd plug in. What do we get? 300. 300. So oh, wow. you can cover up to 300 square feet if this is our function and we have from zero to three quarts of paint to use. So you figure out what the reasonable domain is and then you plug those reasonable numbers into your function. A of zero, A of three, okay? That gives you your reasonable range. So your domain would be between zero and three. Your range would be between zero and 300. Yes, ma'am. Wait, how big is 300 square feet? 300 square feet? Um, I mean, okay, let's finish the question and then I'll show you what 300 square feet would look like, okay? okay? Um, so if we're going to graph this, what's going to go down here as my label? What's our X? Quartz, right? Our Q, we said, is our X. This is quartz. This one is going to be area, okay? So, excuse me. You could have zero quartz. Or you could have one quart 
or you could have two quarts, or you could have three quarts. You can't go past that, right? So I'm just gonna count by ones. You could count by halves if you wanted to stretch it out a little more. I'm not gonna stretch this one out. Um, what would you count by on your y-axis, your area? 100. I would count by hundreds. So 100, 200, 300. You can count by 50s if you want to stretch it out. Okay, so here's the deal. You don't need the squiggly line because each one is going up by 100, right? From zero to 100 is still 100 units in between. So if you think about this, if I plug in a one, how many square feet is that? 100. If I plug in a two into my function, I get 200. If I plug in a three, I get 300. Is this continuous or discrete? Continuous. It's continuous, but here's the trick. It's not continuous in that it keeps going forever and ever and ever, but it is continuous in that you can do any amount between your start and your finish, right? I can use 1.25 quarts. So this is continuous. Do you want to draw the line in? But you don't want to keep the line going because we don't have four quarts to work with. So you just do that little chunk. Okay? Yes, ma'am. What's the difference between continuous and discrete? Continuous is like put the line in. Discrete is I just have these points and that's all I can do. So like if I buy one ticket or two tickets or three tickets, right? You're not going to buy one and a half tickets to a concert. That would be discrete. But because you can use part of a can of paint, this is continuous because you can use 1.25 quarts of paint, okay? Okay, so here's the question. If you have seven quarts of paint to work with instead of three, then your reasonable domain is between what? Zero and seven. And your reasonable range is between zero and what? 700 instead. No, it needs to be between because it can be anywhere in between there, so right? Zero, like zero is less than or equal to the function, which is less than or equal to seven hundred. You have to write it like this. Okay, questions on that? Wait, technically.